Today I'm going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite hydroponic methods to grow vegetables and flowers. Several years back, I was able to correspond with Professor Bernie Kratke from the University of Hawaii. And this is sometimes referred to as passive form of hydroponics because there's no pumps or air stones in it. But oftentimes uh, there's a piece of slang that goes along to describe this type of setup as being the crack key method. And that is where it originated. What you see here is a 14 gallon drum and it's filled with nutrient water all the way up to right below the lid. There's a dwarf tomato plant that's in here and it sits in a hole that I drilled in the middle of the lid and I'll lift this up and show it to you in just a second or two. But this is an arrow garden variety of tomato. It's called a micro dwarf and it only gets about eight inches in height and it will spread out about uh, 24 to 30 inches. If I lift the lid, you can see those beautiful white roots, very healthy. The net pot I told you about is right up here and the roots are coming out through the uh, slots in the net pot. There's no grow media in here that does anything it basically just stabilizes the plant so you can use anything in that net cup to go around the plant even gravel if you want to uh, rinse off some gravel and use it there now the roots themselves this upper zone that you see is what's called the air roots and they uh, perform gas exchange that the plant needs to remain healthy and then the lower roots that you see here are what's submerged in the water now, unlike deep water culture, you can see that these roots only go down about that far. The reason for that is their only function is to pull water up to the plant. They do not go all the way down to the bottom because the oxygen level is higher at the top. And that is from gas exchange of the water itself. Just the air around the drum and, and the water, even though this lid is on here, it does find its way in and refreshes, and it helps to keep the upper few inches of the water in the drum with enough oxygen that it doesn't need an air stone. The water originally was up to about here and has dropped down to about here. One of the things that uh, I did after my initial correspondence with Bernie Kratke was go out and do a lot of experimentation to find out if the fill once and forget about it type setup that he used for lettuce could be used for fruiting crops. And I've done everything from uh, tomatoes to strawberries to massive uh, cherry tomato plants and passion fruit vines. I have uh, quite a bit of information I've cataloged over the years. The plant that you see here is special in another way because it is a clone and a clone is sometimes referred to as just merely a cutting you know that's been taken from a uh, plant so on the mother plant i took a branch that was a terminal bud which basically meant that you find one of these branches that goes out that has a growth point on it and you cut uh, below that, take off the lower stems, and you can root those in, in nothing more than water. And it takes about uh, anywhere from three days, clear out to possibly eight or nine days. The advantage of a clone is you're not starting from seed and it does grow more quickly. So the first thing that I would like to point out is that it is uh, blossoming already. Uh, the flowers that you see on here actually produced in only 18 days from placing it into this container. That's uh, very impressive considering that uh, 18 versus 34 days for the mother plant is an accelerated timeline. Secondly, I'd like to point out that this has a few green tomatoes on it already. These are also coming along much more quickly than the mother plant, which was direct seeded. These 
uh, showed up in only 30 days versus 54 days in the mother plant. A much faster development using the clone. And here she is. This is the mother plant that I took the cutting from. Uh, she is 140 days old as of today. And I've gotten uh, several tomatoes off this plant. They have a beautiful golden color and a sweet semi-tart flavor profile. One of the things that I like to do is to find a variety that is good for growing indoors that has a lot of fruit set and also a small overall height and width. Once I find a plant that fits those characteristics, I oftentimes like to clone those and continue to grow that particular variety using different methods. Here is another cutting that I took from that mother plant and it is currently in the process of rooting in this recirculating desktop hydroponic garden from Mars Hydro. Because this plant is indoors, one of the things that I look for in a grow system is with no pump and no air stone, all this is is sitting in water. It is extremely quiet to have several plants growing around me without the noise that would be an interruption to my normal work day. Finally, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a closer view of the inside. So this is just the lid that came inside of a blue drum. And the original purpose of this drum was to transport uh, liquid sugary sweeteners so it was food safe. A quick coat of spray paint. The lid was really clear and that was spray painted with a fusion plastic paint. That's a 3.75 inch net pot. And there's a view down into the water, just as clean smelling and crystal clear. I use half strength Dynagro 936 nutrient. And the concept is that this plant will continue to grow and fruit and by the time that the nutrient has reached down to the bottom, I won't refill it anymore, but I should have all the tomatoes that I would like to harvest. Typically, you should factor uh, around four to six gallons of nutrient for every pound of fruit that you'd like to harvest off of the plant.